now we have to talk about different ways of charging things. So we can have charging uh, via conduction. And this is with a touch. So first we're going to do charging via conduction. So I have what is called an electroscope. This guy right here is an electroscope. What it is, it's a conductor, a piece of metal, which is all connected right here. And then there is a piece of plastic around it, which is actually an insulator. So this is an electrically insulated piece of metal, which we can use to show various properties of charges. I apologize to those on the very end. It might be difficult to see this, what happens with the foils, but I, the, I don't have many options. Okay, so instead of the um, balloon right now, we're going to use this rubber rod, still made of rubber, and instead of my hair, we're going to use this dead rabbit. Don't you worry, you will all get an opportunity to hold the dead rabbit skin uh, next time when we do a lab. Just imagine if I were trying to do this with a live rabbit. Okay, so here we go. If I take the dead rabbit fur and I rub it on here, we now get a net negative charge on the rubber rod. When I bring that close to the electroscope, what should happen here is I bring it close to the electroscope, electroscope and then I charge the electroscope. We'll do that a little bit better. There we go. I charge the electroscope. So now what I've done is I've taken the negative charges from the rubber rod and I've placed them on the electroscope. And what happened, George, to the thin foils? They moved apart. The two thin foils moved apart. Why, Shilpi, did the two foils move apart? They have the same charge. Because they have the same charge. It comes all the way back to the law of charges. Like charges repel. There was a negative charge on the rubber rod. I brought that over and I touched. I charged via conduction with a touch. I charged the electroscope. The electroscope has a net negative charge. Therefore, the two foils are going to repel one another. I now take my finger and I touch the electroscope, bing, and the two foils move down. I have done what is called grounding the electroscope. I have a large well of charges within my body. This electroscope actually has a very minor number of charges. So when I touch it, I ground the electroscope. Basically, I neutralize the charges on the electroscope. All those negative charges flow out of the electroscope and into me, and my net charge is still approximately zero. The Earth is considered to be a giant ground. It has an infinite well of charges that you can take from or add to without changing the net charge of the Earth. In this particular case, I was the ground. Okay, so that is charge via conduction. What I'm gonna do next is called charge, charging via induction. In charge via induction, I'm going to charge the electroscope, but I'm never actually going to touch the electroscope with the charged rod. So I'm going to take a negatively charged rod, I'm going to bring it close to the electroscope, and I'm going to end up charging the electroscope, but never touching it with the negatively charged rod. Now, get excited, because this is what I consider to be amongst the worst demos that I do all year long. Get excited. George, you're in the front row. You get to see it right there. Yeah, Sean, it's exciting. So here, the key here is to see what happens at the very end. At the very end, the two foils are supposed to move apart because I will leave it, the electroscope, charge. Charge via induction. Here we go. Class, what's the net charge on the rubber rod now? Negative. Negative. So I bring in the negatively charged rod. I bring it close to the electroscope. The two foils move apart a little bit. I then ground the electroscope. I remove the ground and boom, boom. <laughs> George, you see it? Yeah, the two foils move apart at the very end. I'll do it one more time because it was so exciting. Here we go. I will take and rub the rubber rod on the dead rabbit fur. Then we have a negatively charged rod. Bring it close to the electroscope. Bring it close to the electroscope. The two foils move apart a little bit. I ground, I remove the ground and bing, the two foils move apart. I then ground it. Okay, now we're going to walk through that. Your textbook actually has some pictures which are very helpful for understanding the charge via induction. So let's walk through those, please. On page, I believe, I'll look up page C, 
632, you will find these pictures. All right. Page 632. What you have here is charge via induction. Step one. I have the rubber rod, which is negatively charged. I bring it close to the electroscope. They have chosen to show the electroscope using a giant sphere. I would have chosen an electroscope. They chose a giant sphere. There it is. When I bring the, electro the rubber rod close to the electroscope, notice that according to, again, the law of charges, the unlike charges are going to be attracted, and all of the like charges, with the exception of this one, which for some reason is not negative, not, is, are going to be repelled away from the negatively charged rod. Then, the next step was to ground the sphere. This is the international sign for grounding. So I ground the electroscope, and what happens here is all of the negative charges are then allowed to flow to the ground. The positive charges are still attracted to the negatively charged rod, so they don't go anywhere, but the negative charges flow off of the electroscope into ground. The next step was to remove the ground. Now, nothing really changes here, except that we now no longer have anywhere for the um, electrons to flow. And then I remove the rubber rod, and you can see we end with a net positive charge on the electroscope. That is charge via induction. The whole idea here is that I don't actually end up touching the electroscope with the charged object. The only thing I touch it with is the ground charge via induction. We also can charge in another way. We have charge via polarization. And charge via polarization is actually how the balloon is attached or attracted to the wall right now. So, there's another figure in your book, I believe on the next page, which looks like this. This is charge via polarization. The wall, before I bring the balloon close to the wall, the wall has charges and they're oriented kind of haphazardly in the end so that there's no net electric field. They're all kind of randomly oriented. But when I bring the balloon close, the balloon has a net negative charge. In the, vid, in the picture, they've got a net positive charge, it doesn't matter. When I bring a positively charged object close to the wall, it aligns the charges in the wall, such that all the negative charges are on one side and all the positive charges are on the other side. This right here is called polarization. The wall is polarized. Note the net charge of the wall has not changed. It's still uh, electrically neutral. Yet by orienting the charges, we can actually have a net attractive force. The way that works is this. Notice all the positives are attracted to the negatives, and all the positives on the charged object are, are repelled from the positive charges on the wall. But the negative charges are closer to the charged objects or the balloon than the positive charges. And the electric force is actually proportional to distance. The farther it is away, the smaller the force, or inversely proportional, excuse me. So what happens is the negative charges, which are closer, end up causing a larger attractive force than the repulsive force from the positive charges. So the net force is a net attractive force. Charge via polarization. Is your left force? Is the um, is uh, is the attractive is the uh, attractive force you know, equal to the um, repulsion force? No, that, that's the point here, is that there is an attractive force and then a repulsive force, and the attractive force is slightly greater than the repulsive force, and therefore the net force. Is that force because the attractive force is closer to the... Because the uh, unlike charges are slightly closer than the like charges. So they overcome the... Correct. The net force is one of attraction. Okay. So now, we have a watch glass. We have a meter stick. I take the meter stick place it on the watch glass, hence balancing the meter stick on the watch glass. Now, I take the balloon. In place of my hair, we now have a wool sweater. We have negative charges, electrons, moving from my wool sweater to 
the balloon. We now have a net negative charge on the balloon. And I can bring the balloon close to the meter stick, and I can cause this to happen. Note, I can cause the meter stick to rotate without touching it with the balloon, just by bringing the balloon close to the meter stick. Crittenden, why? Because of the law of charges. Give me more, yes, I agree. Uh, the positive attracts the negative. What negative? The negative from your, that was charged by your sweater on the balloon. Okay, so I have a negative charge on the balloon, I agree. So what does it attract? The positive uh, of the meter stick. Yeah, but the meter stick is neutrally charged, right? The meter stick actually carries no net charge. I mean, it has, it's electrically neutral. So how is it that this is going to attract the meter stick? Janelle. Um, it's charged via it's the exact same thing. I am polarizing the meter stick. By bringing the negatively charged um, balloon next to the meter stick, the positive charges get closer to the balloon and the negative charges are repelled farther away and we again have a net attractive force. So we have, again, charge via polarization. So I've charged, I've uh, polarized all of the materials in the meter stick. And of note, when I was in middle school, I learned this basic piece of information learned about charge via polarization, and I learned about balloons sticking to walls and things like that. I got home, I was excited, I shared all the information with my family. We got out a, uh, the balloon that we had, which was a uh, balloon animal balloon, you know, one of the long stringy ones. And uh, I showed, I uh, illustrated by rubbing it on my head, and putting it on the ceiling. And there the balloon stayed on the ceiling for several months. And we learned another fact. Um, dust particles in the air actually carry an electric charge and over time the dust particles in the air were attracted to the ceiling and over time adhered themselves to the ceiling such that after about three or four months when we took that balloon down there was a nice halo of the balloon on the ceiling because all of the dust, a lot of dust particles had adhered themselves to the ceiling and there was like a nice shadow on the ceiling, which was there for approximately a decade. Because I mean, who really paints the ceiling? So it is a good experiment, but I would not suggest it because my parents were not very happy. 